In this video, we're going over student loan debt forgiveness. We're going to break this down into three different sections, and I'll have the timestamps down below in the description if you want to jump around. But the first section is we're going over what's currently happening with debt forgiveness with student loans. Uh, it has been in the news and some articles out there of things are happening, foreshadowing not really. Um, the second section will go into the people that who normally qualify for student loan debt forgiveness. And number three, I'm going to attempt to try and help you guys more than the government is expecting to help people with student loans. I'm putting it out there right in the beginning. I hate both sides, all politicians equally. Doesn't seem like they don't care at all about us. Uh, so let's just keep that in mind. Uh, so let's start off with section one is what's happening right now with student loans. It is June 28th, 2024 to give you a time frame. Anyway, there are 8 million borrowers in this new save plan that they recently created for student loans since last August. Apparently it was about to get passed like within a week and then all of a sudden it just like crumbled. And they were trying to help people with their monthly payments. They were trying to cut them in half. So how the plan was originally set up is if you make $32,800 or less, then your monthly payment would be $0. However, two federal court judges ended up pausing what was going on with this student loan plan that the Biden administration launched last year to try and help people with not only their monthly payments, but also some of their balance. Technically, the interest that I'll get to in a second, um, but just trying to help people get through their student loans quicker. Two lawsuits were filed by Republican-led states. And they're arguing that the Biden administration overstepped their boundaries when they were trying to implement this save plan for student loans. So because of this, people who are enrolled in this save plan cannot be helped at all with any forgiveness during this time. Um, and save stands for saving on a valuable education. Like education's valuable, that's fun. So the borrowers who were hoping to qualify would normally be able to write off their loans after 10 years or making 120 payments qualifying payments, that's important. We'll go into the different people who qualify in the next section. But for example, if you're working for like the government or a non-for-profit, if you're within that industry, and then you're making those 120 payments, those are qualifying payments. You do that for 10 years, and then they supposedly would forgive your loans. There are other plans if you're not in like those types of industries where there's either 20 or 25 years that you would have to go through making those qualifying payments and then you would be able to forgive your student loans. So this Higher Education Act that they were trying to go through of helping people with balances, technically not the balance, is the interest over that, the balance that they owe. So for example, let's say you owe, I don't know, $50,000 in student loans, but your balance is 60000 or you took out 50 in the beginning, now you owe 60 because of interest, you would be, or they would forgive $10,000 of that example because that's just interest. Um, so they'd be able to help out with interest up to 20,000. Not necessarily the balance, just interest. Now they would want to help cancel student debt for borrowers who are enrolled in this program. Now, if you are an undergraduate, you would have to go through 20 years of repayment and if you're a graduate you would have to go through 25 years kind of like I mentioned before. So those are kind of the main things of that $20,000 of interest that they would forgive and trying to help decrease the amount of time that you have to be in this plan and possibly lower your payments on this income based system. All right, so that was a lot of article stuff. So this next section is going into who would actually qualify or normally qualify for the student loan forgiveness. And I was going through, I believe it was like straight from the federal aid or student loan federal aid website. They have a list and I was curious of like how many people would this actually impact? So the first one on their list is a teacher. So I looked up like, what's the percentage of the workforce of teachers? And apparently it's only 2.5% of people working are teachers. So pretty small. If you are a teacher, then this could be good for you. However, this certainly doesn't affect a lot of people. Next one on the list, which is surprisingly larger than I originally thought, are government employees. 
apparently their percentage of the workforce is 13.4%, so they make up a larger chunk. Next are not-for-profits. Those are certainly not a huge percentage of corporations out there, but it is possible if you work for them. Next are nurses, doctors, or medical professionals, and that's a huge, well, not huge, but a good amount of the workforce I found out was around 10.8%. A lot of you guys might be in that industry where you might be able to qualify, and this is after that 10 years you have to make those qualifying payments. And last two are disability, which kind of makes sense. If you're disabled and you can't really work, then they would be able to help you out. And also the income driven repayment plan. Now, I also noticed there were certain ways to discharge a loan depending on certain schools of if certain things have happened. So for example, one is if your school has closed. Now, this is there's a huge asterisk here is if you were either about to be enrolled in it or currently enrolled and then they closed, that's how you could possibly get out of those loans. But if you like graduated 10 years ago and they closed today, most likely you're not going to get that forgiven. Next on that list was if a school misled you. I mean, don't all schools mislead us, but that's probably such a small percentage. I don't even know what that even means. Um, but I guess if they explain like a certain program, if you enrolled in it and it just wasn't what you expected it and was wrong, I guess. Um, but I'm sure most people don't fall under that. There's also federal Perkins loans borrowers. Now, they no longer provide these types of loans. Originally, for undergraduates, the maximum amount of that loan was 27500 And for graduates, it was 32500 And that max rate was fixed rate at 5%. So those loans weren't huge. However, if you do have those types of loans, you might want to look into it a little bit more. Also for parent borrowers. So if the parent was uh, part of the loan and the parent passes away, then that might be involved with forgiveness or discharge of the loan. Same thing with death of the student. The student, if, if there's no one on the loan, then it can't be paid, repaid. And for some reason, part of their list also said declared bankruptcy. But I do know that if you declare bankruptcy, then student loans or federal student loans are usually not, they're always with you. Maybe specific bankruptcies, um, but certainly not something to like go into bankruptcy for. So that was a list of people that normally do qualify. If you fall into that list of that first list of those different industries, that qualifies you for that 10 year time horizon. Um, that other list, then you might be able to just discharge the loan completely. Um, but I feel like those are such a small percentage of population with student loans. Like for most other people, like if you're a normal person with a normal job, chances are you don't qualify for any of these which would then push you into that 20 or 25 year time frame. So yes, we'll have to see what happens in, I don't know how long this might take. I mean, it's been four years to get to this point, which really nothing happened. Uh, now they did pause on student loans, you know, over the past few years, but I feel like that didn't really help anyone. It kind of just delayed what was eventually going to happen. You're eventually gonna have to pay the loans. Now, if you're hoping that it does go somewhere, if it takes another four years, and then what if ends up at a dead road after another four years and you look back and it's been eight years of nothingness. So I feel like they're just putting a lot of people with student loans, like they're just wait over there, we're gonna get to it and making people hope for the best and chances are what nothing's gonna happen. So this is why I wanted to create this next section is to try and help you more than the government seems to be because for majority of the people, they aren't helping you. This section might make people a little bit mad because it will take some hard work. Um, that's kind of a four letter word these days. You do have, it's going to be challenging if you have student loans. Um, but getting into it, the first thing you have to understand is one, the government is most likely not going to help you and how you are the best chance of making your life better. So you need to have the right mindset, not only for that, but also understand like if you have a bunch of student loans and you're like, oh, I'm never going to pay those off. 
that mindset, you already told yourself that you're not going to pay them off. So you have to switch that mindset into believing that you actually can. So mindsets are great, but let's move into some more actionable steps that could possibly help you. We kind of mentioned it before with the income driven repayment program. So to kind of help you stabilize where you may be now. So if you're not making a ton of money, so your salary's down here, but your payment is way up here, you should try to go into the income based because it's a percentage of your income. So if you're not making too much, then your payment would be lower. Unfortunately, it would take you much longer to pay off, more interest and everything, um, but it could at least help you in the short term. Moving on to the next step of possibly helping you is refinancing. Now, right now might be a little bit of a weird situation because rates have been elevated for the past couple of years. So if you have a variable rate that was going up with rates recently, um, that's why it's good to, if you're able to refinance and lock in like a fixed rate. Now people are kind of expecting rates to eventually go back down, possibly by the end of the year into next year, we'll have to see what happens. Um, so that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. If rates do go down, you might be able to refinance to have a lower payment or just double check your rates right now to see if they are lower today than when you originally got them. Chances are that might not be the case, but it's always good to understand what you have, what your rate is, and if it's a fixed or a variable. Now moving into these next sections, which might make people kind of uh, maybe annoyed, we'll have to see what happens, but these are ways to get out of it. Again, it's not easy, but these are ways. So the next one would be extra payments. I recently paid off one of my uh, wife's student loans. So I started looking at the next one that we were gonna tackle. And she had it for like two years. And we realized that you're paying these, like the minimum payments for the beginning years. And you realize the balance isn't going down. You're just essentially just paying interest. And the balance could be higher than what you originally paid off. And that's why um, the save plan what the Biden administration was trying to do is cut down that interest. So that's what you have to tackle is the interest. If you're making extra payments, it's going directly to that principal amount that you owe. And that's how it goes down finally. Now that might be pretty obvious for some people and they're like, well, I simply can't. Like I'm not making enough. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. So I can't make those extra payments, which is why I'm going into the next step is either a side hustle or an extra job. Now, for me, I do have a side hustle selling on eBay. If you see all this random stuff all over here, those are some of the things that I sell. Um, but I'm able to make several hundred extra dollars a month. So I'm essentially using that extra money to help pay down the debt. So you could do something similar, whether it's a business or even an extra job. Now, job like an extra job, a lot of people don't like their main job, so I get a second job. And jobs are also very limiting with their time. Like you have to clock in at a certain time and clock out at a certain time. So if you're doing something more for yourself, you're able to have some flexibility. So those could certainly help you, but there are some other people that are like, hey, listen, I already got an extra job or I'm already working all of this over time. I don't have any extra time to do that to make those extra payments. And something that could possibly help in that situation Again, it's not easy. Like this is very difficult. And this is why a lot of people lean on this forgiveness because they don't want to do this stuff. And it's understandable. Like the, the price of tuition is just astronomical. I feel for a lot of these people out there and that my wife falls into the same category. You need to make more money. I feel like a lot of people in those situations, their income is very low. So what you have to do is grow within that career. You shouldn't stay stagnant in a career for too long. You know, you gain that experience and that's great. And then you eventually move on to either that next job, look at other corporations or businesses or jobs or whatever. Just gain that experience and then grow up. That's how you increase your income. Easier said than done sometimes. I don't want people to just stay in a job for like 10 years super stagnant and never really getting any type of raises or promotions like that. You kind of need to make that initial move or initial steps so you can move forward. 
So that's on the income side. At the same time, you have to look at your expense side. Again, it is kind of obvious, but it is difficult at the same time, especially if you have a lot of expenses. You have to manage them. You have to understand not only how much you're making, but how much you're spending, because then you end up seeing how much you're either making or losing every single month. We'll have to see if I do another video because I have a whole spreadsheet that I list like all my credit cards, how much I'm paying on groceries, restaurants, gas, every single month so you can see it. A budget is like what you're hoping to spend on it, but when you're actually tracking what you're spending, you see exactly what you're spending on it and you could see things from a different lens when you see the actual numbers. So maybe I'll do another video going over like a spreadsheet that shows you that. If you guys are interested, you could just let me know. And I do have previous videos going over how to pay off debt super quick, um, which is basically a video of what I just explained here. Um, and that's kind of it. So what's going on with student loans right now? Essentially nothing. We went over who qualifies. So you might have found out if you qualify. Chances are most people don't. So you're going to have to make some decisions of what you need to do. And it will be challenging, but I hope that maybe one of these ideas might have sparked something in your brain that like might be able to help you out. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comments. And good luck out there. I know student loans are on everyone's minds, but I know that you can get through it and hopefully this can help you. So I'll see you guys in the next one.